This is a Tallahassee update from the Florida Restaurant and Lodging Association. Good afternoon, my name is Carol Dover and I'm President and CEO of the Florida Restaurant and Lodging Association. I want to thank all of the members who came up today. Um, I especially want to thank the media for covering, as you can see by our signs, uh, empty beds don't pay taxes. That is our theme for the day. We have formed this bed tax coalition to support the tourist development tax laws that are currently in place and to oppose any measure to expand the use of this tax. Today we have hoteliers here from all over parts, different parts of the state. We have restaurateurs here because guess what? This is not just a hotel tax, folks. This is a tourist tax. We also have representatives here from the Attractions Association, Bill Lupfer. We have representatives from the uh, Convention and Visitors Bureau, Robert Scrobe. We have the representative from the RV Parks and Campgrounds, Bobby Cornwell. And we have Rich Maladecki up from the Central Florida Hotel Association. All of them are here today to try and stop the impeding assaults on our bed tax revenue. We are not here today to ask for a repeal of the tax. We are not here today to ask for you to even consider reducing this self-imposed tax that, by the way, today generates over a half a billion dollars for county governments. But we are here today to fight for the protection of this tourist development tax that was originally intended to draw visitors to our communities and to stimulate our tourist economy. As all of you know, our state is suffering from a global recession. Raising taxes and diverting tax dollars away from bringing visitors to Florida hurts our state's economy. In over the three decades that this law has been on the books, there have been 52 amendments to the law, over 400 attempts to change this law. The Bed Tax Coalition cannot stand by while additional attempts are made to erode what this tax has always been intended for and that was to bring tourists into our state. It's with uh, great pleasure that I turn this over to one of our uh, hotel members who came up from South Florida, Carlos Moliné, who represents LXR Hotels. Great, Carlos, thank you, thank Carol. You. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Carlos Moliné. I'm the director of operations for several hotels in Fort Lauderdale with LXR Luxury Resorts and Hotels. Simply put, and you see it on our signs today, empty beds don't generate tax dollars. Florida hoteliers have never pushed ever to repeal or lower the tourist development tax. In fact, our industry seeks to ensure that these taxes are kept to their original intent. And that intent, ladies and gentlemen, is very simple. is to draw tourists to our communities and to the hotels that generate these taxes. As Carol mentioned earlier, tourism fuels Florida economy. We actually represent 900,000 jobs. We must do all we can today in today's times to protect these jobs. Expanding the use of this tax or raising this tax is the wrong thing to do at the wrong time. Our economy today is struggling. 72,000 jobs lost in December. Diverting tourism promotion and punishing the industry is the wrong way to turn Florida's economy around. More than half of our hotels here have fewer than 50 rooms. Travel to Florida, ladies and gentlemen, is not a given. Promotion is critical to ensure our place is a premier travel destination in this state and keep it and continue to grow it as it has been, but most recently, obviously, declining. According to Visit Florida Research, every dollar spent on advertising travel to our state produces three dollars in return spending. For over three decades, state and local governments have diverted tourist development revenues towards causes unrelated to growing Florida's tourism industry against the original promise made to the hospitality industry. This has to stop today. A great example is in Broward County. Just recently, some monies were allocated for turtles. Now, as Certainly turtles, very important to the environment, very important to me as a human being and as a hotelier, but I don't see the correlation between the turtles and the fact of advertisement and promoting our tourism, which is what we need now, today, more than ever. So I ask you to really take a look at this, and again, empty beds don't generate tax dollars. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carlos. Also, um, this, this guy is no stranger, I know, to the media here. Uh, Dominic Calabro is the president and CEO of uh, Tax Watch. Thank you, Carol. And um, we have a report that we've done some time ago. I'll just share it with those who want to see it. But simply said, Florida Tax Watch is Center on Tourism and Competitive Florida has studied this issue many, many times. It's not, thank you, Carlos, it's not merely 
about uh, honoring the promise to the tourism industry. It's also honoring the promise to taxpayers. It's making sure that we do not eat our seed corn. Simply stated, the bed tax has been an incredible uh, tourism marketing device. It has strengthened, enhanced, and developed our communities throughout the state. Uh, the bed tax, properly used for tourism marketing, has helped add tens of billions of dollars to Florida state and local economies each year. Collectively, it's, it's unfathomable to understand what our, our state and our economies would look like if we didn't properly use it for that purpose. Uh, it also adds billions of dollars to our treasury for state and local governments. The bed tax must not be diverted for other purposes and worsen Florida's economy and economic recovery now when it is needed most. If anyone had a question about the impact of tourism marketing, I can just turn the clock a little bit back to 2001. Shortly after September 11, 2001, we got a call, Tax Watch got a call from then Governor Jeb Bush. He said, help. I mean, you could feel the angst in his voice on that phone call. It was around three, two or three days after November, uh, September 11. And the first thing I told the governor, because we did a, Tax Watch did a study for tourism uh, being a, a visit Florida, we knew that the impact it brought to our economies and to our state general revenue fund. So I said, not only should you not cut, but you need to double the tourism advertising budget. Being a pretty tight wad and fiscal conservative, <laughs> he didn't want to do it at first. But we convinced him that this was essential, and as it turned out, the industry worked together, and we were able to get people back back to Florida as quickly as possible. And that helped our economy tremendously. It also helped our tax systems tremendously. So you don't have to be highly uh, technical. You just have to look at history. This has proved to be a real seed corn for Florida's economy time and time again. And the worst thing we can do now is to divert it for even good purposes, let alone questionable purposes. This is part of Florida's economic recovery and must not be diverted now at when it's needed most. Carol. Great. Thank you, Dominic. And Grant Pache is here, Director of Oper Operations of uh, Texas Cattle Company, a great longstanding restaurant member and a, uh, a restaurateur who will give you our perspective from that angle. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, it's a pretty good long trek from Thomasville where I had to park this morning. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I did get lucky. I'm here representing uh, the restaurant tours in the state of Florida. I operate two steakhouses, one in Polk County and one in Pinellas County. And it was very clear that this, this problem, this economic problem, uh, has reared its ugly head in 2007 for restaurant tours. Uh, restaurants in Polk and Pinellas County uh, have been closing at an alarming rate. Um, the crisis has been extremely rough on the coastal towns while the cities inland have fared better. Florida tourism is paramount to driving the only current viable economic engine left with the housing growth of Florida coming to a standstill. I would hope that our legislatures understand that because the next, because the next wave of restaurant closures will begin in April when those who have not done well in quarters one and two are driven out because they did not make enough money to sustain their third quarter. <laughs> this is very critical that the bed tax be left alone as is and we use those marketing dollars to promote tourism here in Florida. Thank you. Thank you mm -hmm. Richard Goldman I know was uh, going to address you today. He's the chairman of Visit Florida. He's from Amelia Island. I think he's been hung up in a committee which I apologize that he's not here. So at this time um, we're happy to open it up for Q&A. How exactly would 161 threaten the bed tax? Do you want to, where's our good hotel, I'm going to let our hoteliers answer the hotel answer questions. Again, we want to make clear, we're not against 161 at all, uh, on the opposite. But what we want to do is that we want to make sure it's only for the intended uses. And the intended uses have been clear, which is to advertise our destination so we could get more visitors coming to our hotels, spending dollars at our restaurants, and spending dollars, by the way, in all other industries. Because as you know, the hospitality business really is the engine that drives a lot of the other businesses in South Florida, including the marine industry and many others. Okay, what does 161 do to threaten the bed tax? Well, it still has the provision in it for affordable housing. 
So we have a. How much of that? Could, how much of the bed tax could they tap into? There is an additional one cent, one percent. And again, just as Carlos said, Rick, one of the things in 161, we are not opposed to the bill at all. We actually think the bill is a very good bill. It's just got just some, opposed the funding. We're opposed to the one part of it because it's got a lot of other good affordable housing issues in it. Um, but we just feel that the one portion that pertains to affordable housing and, and adding it as a bed tax is the part that we would like to see stripped out of the bill. Rick and Carol, if I may add yes. to it. Rick, I think this, the real problem is not just what's happening with the bill right now. It's what's going to happen through the rest of the committee and, and uh, floor process. There's, there's just an incredible temptation to use a tax source that's largely or seen as largely paid by visitors, okay? And, uh, you know, legislatures love uh, don't tax you, don't tax me, tax the visitor behind the tree. Well, the problem here is that is, as we said, seed corn. And it is very tempting, especially with the challenges on say, hey, uh, we're not going to raise taxes, we're not going to, we're going to free it up to relieve our, our, our local governments. And that's a real serious blow to Florida's uh, economy, not only to the, this industry, but most importantly, to all the uh, induced and economic um, sectors that are benefit by these tourism promotion dollars. So, um, actually, if anything, uh, this is one area that I think you really got to hold, hold the fort, hold on to what you got, and continue to use it when it's needed most. So it's really more both now and what is likely to be uh, amendments and changes That's to right. divert more of those funds to. Uh, you know, well-intended, nice, sometimes very well-described objectives and other times very questionable ones. I mean, when uh, <laughs> somewhere, I think it was in South Florida, um, they were using some of the bed tax dollars for um, buying sweaters for some of their, uh, I guess, some of the, their police dogs and stuff like this. Like, what? And it's some form of advertising. I said, oh my gosh, it's incredible. So <clears throat> more than some of those specious things, there's some legitimate demands that local governments have. This is simply the wrong source to drive it from. Right. Yes, sir. Good morning. Uh, Will Brown, Tallahassee Democrat. Yes. My question Hi, for you was, uh, for anyone was, um, considering that of the top five or six states when it comes to spending on tourism marketing, Florida's, uh, the private sector in Florida contributes a little bit more than 20% what I read. Um, is that a concern from uh, from you guys, the Restaurant Lodging Association, that because the private sector contributes so much to our state's uh, tourism spending, that uh, taking money from the bed tax and using it for other purposes is more detrimental because we spend our private sector spends more than the private sector in other states? Well, it's a, it's an interesting angle to it. Of course, we we really <coughs> care a lot about the fact that you have to protect the bed tax regardless of how much money is coming in from the private sector, how much other states are doing. You know, you can't, you can't compare Florida's bed tax law in Chapter 125 to uh, what other states are doing and what the private sector may be contributing. You just have to remember that it was intended in the early 70s. Remember, it's been on the books for 30 years. It was intended only to advertise and promote tourists to come to our state. And by the way, it's done a really good job of doing that. Florida's been the number one tourist state for many, many years. But if you begin to, no matter what, I mean, and, and as Dominic said, there are a lot of really good oh, projects out there that we would never say we are opposed to the project. We're just opposed to the funding mechanism in which they're going to use to, to fund the project. So. Um, but we continue to support the, the private sector dollars as well. But if we don't get the tourist in the state, think about how many sales tax dollars we're losing on top of the bed tax revenue. What about sales tax and all of the other tax collections that we're missing by you know, 85 million visitors that, that we have the luxury of coming to our state? I think one thing we cannot take for granted is what happens if next year is only 50 million or 20 million? It's a lot bigger than the bed tax. But if we don't advertise, one thing is for sure, they are not coming. There's a lot of other places they can go than Florida. Yeah, I wanted to add to that, that, that question or elaborate on it. Florida just has a, a much greater amount at risk. Its, it's reliance on, on tourism uh, is, is one of the, as Governor Lawton Childs and governors before him, governors since, have said it's one of the key, uh, the three-legged stool in Florida's economy. And I mean, we saw very clearly after 9-11 
we had a, a robust housing and construction industry. What we didn't have was that basically our s near 70 million tourists left the state, couldn't fly into our state, so we had to bring them back. Um, <coughs> clearly, you saw that we were not falling as rapidly in our revenues at a state and local level until we started to see some fall off in tourism. And tourism is one of the key um, economic backstops of Florida's economy. And the bottom line is this, uh, just absolutely be certain that uh, with too much at risk, the juice is simply not worth the squeeze to take this money and divert it to some place other than tourism marketing. It's proved itself time and time again. We have a very good, uh, with our private sector partners, mm -hmm. have done a really good job. It's in their self-interest, but it's also in the interest of of schools, of uh, healthcare, Medicaid, and all the services at the state and local level are borne by this essential seed corn. So it's really important to keep it for its its intended purpose. Carol, could I add to that? Um, we can't forget the numerous amount of people that this thing affects. It's beyond the hotels and motels and restaurants. They're in Pinellas County, Hillsborough County, there are charter fishing boats that are going to be losing out on this particular uh, issue. There are suppliers, there are insurance agencies, there are, it's a trickle down effect as they say, but you, there are so many people that are involved in this particular piece that by changing the rules now, we're in fact going to affect everybody's life that works here in Florida. Any other questions? Thank you all very much for coming today and uh, of course I'll, I'll leave you with my closing remark that uh, empty beds don't pay taxes. So uh, we hope that you all uh, will make sure that this issue is, is covered well, I hope. And uh, again, for all of you who traveled up here today, I know it's a, a long ways to come for you know, 20 minutes, but uh, thank you for being up here. We really appreciate it. Thanks to the media. Thank you.